Give him glory one more time. Give him glory one more time. Mezota la boshada brake rado brade zare do bosata. Oh Lord, we thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and praise, Lord. Me koba shela de zoda rabra gedos. says that in this last day that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as water covered the sea. We can only triumph by knowledge in these last days. Of course we see so many things we're using why we're born that have become obsolete now. Knowledge is running in very fast than we think or expect. The same is of the spirit. So please pay attention to 
what you are being taught. Let me hear your amen. amen. So today, under this topic, I will be sharing with you on the causes of poverty and the secrets of riches. Why are people poor? Why do people remain poor? Why are some set of people rich? We need to know that. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 11. Matthew 26 and verse 11. I think it's okay like this. That's your moving hand. He said, for ye have the poor always with you. But me, ye have not always. Jesus said that the poor will remain on this earth. In other words, not everybody will be rich. Not everybody. And the singular reason is because it's not everybody that we hear. Okay? Some we hear, but not everybody will take steps. Hallelujah. When you look at the world, the society in general, sometimes you see human being that has no issue. Leg is not paining them, hand is, hand is not paining them, but brain is paining them. Because you don't see them walk, walking around, and uh, what they are doing is fine barracks. You know, fine beggars. You see somebody walk into this church now, and you say, Can I see the pastor? Okay, you want to see the pastor? There's no problem. And then they will now tell all kind of story. I'm coming from Wari. I landed in Maduguri. From Maduguri, I took flight to Lagos. And I cannot find the person I'm looking for. And now you just see all kind of lies. The reason is because they, they have chosen that path. Because by the time they go to 10 places, 5 will show mercy on them. And if they have gained 5,000 in a day, that's big money. For doing nothing, just for telling lies. But in the long run, it will now begin to tell that what you need in life is more than what you eat in a day. Is somebody hearing me now? It's more than food. So it's not everybody that will do what Jesus is teaching. It's not everybody. And because of that, it's not everybody that will be able to make it. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Give me the hearing here. Yeah? And the doing grace. Doing grace. Mark chapter 14, verse 7. Mark chapter 14, verse 7. Jesus saying the same thing. Just want us to know. Mark 14, verse 7. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. You have the poor with you always. You have the poor with you always. I made up my mind I am not going to be one of those poor that will be on the earth. Those ones that Jesus is referring to, that they are going to be poor, called poor on the earth, I am not going to be among them. Now the wise, the wise men, says that it is not your fault to be born poor. It is not your fault. You are, you are not the one who committed the sin. But if you die poor, it is your fault. Because you have had the privilege to live your life on the earth and then gain knowledge and break through in the areas where you blame your parents. In the area where you blame the people that were before you. So Jesus has established that the poor will be on the earth. But it's me and you that said we will never be enlisted in that group. Hallelujah. Then, what are the lifestyles that makes poor and that makes rich? What are the lifestyles? I have 10 lifestyles here. If I can teach like three, I will just do that. 
What are the lifestyles? Number one, laziness is a plague of poverty. Laziness is a plague of poverty. Why diligence makes rich in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 it said he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand that is who behaves lazy we end up being poor put him in the midst of trillions of dollars it will only take time by the time you come back it is not going to increase by an inch it's going to decrease and the more the laziness stays, the more the thing goes down until there is nothing called wealth there. It become a poor that dealer with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent, hard-working soul make it rich. Make it rich. One of the secrets that shows someone is lazy is too much sleep. It's a sign of laziness. You love sleep so much. Eight hours is not enough. You had more to it. Had more to it. When some people are complaining 24 hours is not enough to do the work they are doing. You have so much time that eight hours is not enough for sleep. It's a sign of laziness. The Bible says, not me. He said, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand to sleep. So shall thy poverty come. In Proverbs chapter 6, we read verses 11, 9 to 11. So shall poverty come. How long without sleep? Oh, slugger. That's, oh, lazy man. When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Verse 10. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand to sleep. Verse 11. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an abma. He will be so arrested by poverty that it will take deliverance for him to lose himself. Hello. I don't envy anybody in life. I thank God. I don't envy anybody. Thank God for anybody having testimony. I know how I started life. I came to Lagos with a black poly bag. Black poly bag. Black poly bag. But God is a witness, even my soul, that I have not been lazy in life. I don't know how to be lazy. I don't know how to be lazy. It, it annoys me to be lazy. It annoys me that you, you, are, you are just lazy. You are looking for a soft way of life. This church that is in many places, it started in one room. One room. Bed was there. Table was there. We, we were just there. No one died. It's not a... No one, no one, zero died. Where are you going to see it? Is somebody here? Hard works in prayers. Hard works in studying the world. Hard works in prayer. Hard works in studying the world. Hard works in prayer. I started doing crusade while I was two years old in the Lord. It's not a crusade just today. God knows I've not wasted my time. Is somebody here? Laziness is a magnet for poverty. Hard work. Number one, freedom of finances is to be able to pay your bills. That's number one victory. You must be able to do that before you have excess. And if you can pay your bills without relying on any man, you are rich. Tell your neighbor you are rich. 
You are rich. You pay your bills without looking at any man. You are the best. You are the best. That's what I'm talking about. I told you from the beginning of this teaching that what I'm teaching you about is financial freedom. It's not just accusation of uh, so much cash. In the, that's not what I'm talking about. When we are talking about financial prosperity, it's, uh, uh, it's a life where you are you have dominion. You are you are absolutely free from being tied down by one thing or the other. Financially. One of the reasons why they think some 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 you know that the ministry work is not a work is because of so many lazy pastors. So many. So many. So many. But if you are lazy, you can't be around me. We'll fight. People will begin to put mouth on it. Because every day I see you like this. Is the way I, what I'll be giving to you, you won't like it. You'll discharge. Hello? You won't like it. It's true. You won't like it. Sometimes I call my people. Say, because nobody dream about holiday. Not once. Nobody dream. Even me, I don't have holiday. It's just, you are tired, go and rest. If it is one week, go and rest. Three days, go and rest. But say, only... Where do you see it? <laughs> Where do you see it? We just keep walking and walking and walking and walking. The little one. Sometimes I come past like, where are you? You, say, ah, you won't go home today. <laughs> Everybody in this church, this church and our house, they, we don't know where we sleep in the night, until the night. Are you going home? Today? That's how we walk. That's how we walk. Praise the Lord. We just walk, okay? This one. We just keep walking, keep walking. Some people have been here for since, uh, since that. Some are to sleep over. Praise God. Is it because of today? No, because of tomorrow. Because it is what you plan today that you are going to live tomorrow. Laziness is a bad habit. And it can be taken because you don't just react. You just not know. You don't just want to stress yourself. You just feel like, why should you go through all those stresses? You need to go through it to train your body. To train your body. Be, be, build a habit of work. It won't kill you. In, in, in my darling, they say, Work does not kill. It is poverty that kills. Hello? Poverty kills. How will you feel when you are in the midst of your friend and all of them are looking very well and you are just, you are, you are, you are going up and down. You are cleaning their shoes. Will you be happy? Number two. Refuser of divine instruction. Most times, people have breakthroughs by obeying divine instruction. So when you are not used to obeying divine instruction, especially when you think you know and you don't have someone who gives you instruction spiritually, then you are going to miss it. Refuse her to divine instruction. I told you some times ago, I was in the camp, I went there 2012. I needed money for for something. And then I just went there just to tell God, Lord, this is my desire. It's not because I have any problem there, but I just desire this and I need the money. So, when I got to the camp, I saw the table where they sell books. So, and I went there to see new books. I always buy books, but I just got there that day to see where, whether there are new books. And the man who sell book there was not the one there. There was one young lady. Maybe that was just standing there for him. <clears throat> so I looked at the books. Okay, since I'm going to be here till maybe evening or tomorrow. So I just looked at the books to go and take my decision and then left and went away. And the way I was seated, I was praying and meditating, praying and meditating. Around that afternoon. Then the lady walked to me. That lady that was 
by the bookshop, the book, uh, book stand, and walked to me and said, if you need financial breakthrough, I never discussed anything with her. He said, go and, so, go and give your pastor money. Because the lady didn't even know me. The guy didn't know me. Praise the Lord. So, and then he said, if you need, sir, sorry, sir, if you need financial breakthrough, go and give money to your pastor. And uh, I said, thank you. God bless you. So she left. Ah, in my heart, I said, when they preach to a preacher, <laughs> I said, I just sat down. So immediately I finished. I didn't have money anyway. But I remember somebody gave me a check. That check was to last for three months before, before what they call it? Before maturity. So it was a post dated check. 10,000. So I now began to look for that check. I checked my diary. I said, ah, where did I keep that check? So I now found the check. I said, now I found. And uh, it that happens to be that day or a day before or two days after that the check will mature. I said, okay, this one is money. Will I give you? I was driving. I said, let me branch one of our church there. I look, I, Pastor, are you there? He said, yes, okay. Take, this one is for you. Praise the Lord. And I left. Not up to three days. I was seated there. Somebody came to visit me and just made mention. I said, what about that thing? He said, I said, ah, we are still working on it. He has my account and he was doing like this on Blackberry. Before you know it, 400,000 was shifted into my account. Simple obedience to divine instruction. I don't know that girl. The girl. There's no how the girl can know the Bible as I know it. But yet, God has to use him. There are several times God will humble you because of your pride. You so much know. You are so, you speak in tongue. You have been in the church for 300 years. Because of that, nobody can give you instruction. That's why some people remain in nothing. Some people remain in nothing. You must have the hear to receive divine instruction. Are you here? When we re refuse divine instructions, most times it increases our penury. We must learn to absorb, to take what God says. What God says. You know, which day is uh, this month going to end? When? When is it? On the first day of this month, or the anointing was so said, the Lord said, those who want this, he said they should bring a seed of what we call it. Turning a gate of captivity. Even me that God's act to say it. I have forgot where until when people it's not that I I I okay, when you get there today, you're gonna what concerns me? He didn't even say they should bring it to me. Bring it to this place. Only about five or four. The month will go now. Some people will still be praying. Rubbish. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. He gave instruction. You don't know exactly what that instruction can do in your life. You are ignoring instruction. You are praying the prayer of who? Divine instruction is now it is key to financial liberty. Kenneth Copeland, who is regarded as one of the biggest, the richest family in the in the body of Christ today. Only akin to divine instruction. Buy that land. I don't have money. And then he drove past. He was coming back from that village again. And then got to that same thing. He said, go and buy that land. Ah, what where will I see money? He said, God said, sell this car you drive. Sell this car. Hello. He sold the car. Bought the land. You know what happened? Two years after, the oil was discovered in that land. What did, I, what did they discover? And then, when American government discovered oil there, who owns this land? They shared it, and then they called him to meet him. He takes 40%, America takes 40%, and then 20% becomes the work and all of those things they use there. That's where he has given over 30 airplanes just by instruction. Bishop Wedeku was coming from UK, US one day, and he said, according to him, now, that was a very successful trip because God really blessed him. 
And then as he was landing in Lagos, God said, everything with you, you are bringing from me. He said, take it to my servant in Benin. And then the wife was already in the airport, waiting to take him home. And he said, no, madam, God just said we should go to, I should go to Benin now. From there, he took another flight to Benin. He didn't get home first and brought the whole money before Agbishop. And Agbishop said, yes, I, God told me you are coming. And then he said, spread, all, spread the money on the ground. Spread the money, all the dollar. He said, march on it. He said, from today, money becomes your servants. He said, yet, because we have obeyed God, I will not take a dime out of it. Pack everything and still go. He didn't lose one dime. He only obeyed. Is somebody here? Yes, sir. Too many masters. Too many masters. Too many masters. One day, 2021, I was in Abuja. As I was preaching, a thought came to me. I just ignored it. I was continuing. I continued my preaching. As I was, they were taking me home. The Lord said to me, gather your friends. Bring them into your house. Give them so, so, so as prophetic offering. Let them pray for your family. So I called them from Abuja. While I said, so, so did. And then that morning, all my friends gathered there. And I was giving them prophetic offering. In envelopes. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Myself, my wife, and my children, we knelt down. They prayed for us. They didn't know what God said to me. Everybody left. Divine instruction. No man grows above his level of obedience to what God is saying. You might have kept the money somewhere. He said, pack everything and take to the church because he has more than that for you. And then you look at you and say, hey, hey, hey. You remember I told you? In the, during COVID, when we were doing the back of this place, you know, church has money, so I didn't believe God was going to be looking for the little my migra uh, money in my account. Why should God be looking at that? So we're doing. I said, okay, when the bank allow us to get money, we'll do this. He said, what of the one you? Okay? Ah, that one is my money now. <laughs> That one is my money now. Because I was I was trying to get a car for myself. So, okay, let me keep this one here. God was putting his eye on that same one again. Praise the Lord. Eventually, the following day, I brought it. I told you, my account balance has never been reduced to that amount since that year. Not once. Oh Lord, give us the hearts to hear you. Financial pressure is not good. It's not good. It's not good. It does not represent spirituality. Financial pressure is not good. Lord, give us the ear to hear that every time you speak to us, Lord, there shall be an explosion. In Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter number 13, verses 18 and 23. He said, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth what? Because he refuses instruction. He said, What he will reap from it is poverty. And of course, poverty comes with shame. Just like a woman cannot go without bag, whether small or poor or big. That's how poverty can go without shame. You will not know poverty again in your life. But he that regarded the proof shall be honored. Riches goes with honor. Riches goes with honor. Verse 23, again, verse 23. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. The poor will not always do things right. They have so much food in their tillage, but who, how do they get it? How do they bring it out? Want of judgment. Want of judgment won't allow it While we're growing up, we used to believe 
that those who are rich in the community, in the town, uh -uh. you see that we say they are lucky or you say they have done something. Praise the Lord. Because you see some people will be so, if you go, Lagos is powerful. If you go to villages, you see, you see absolute wretchedness. Wretchedness that, that, that cannot enter heaven. Ah! Wretchedness. Smelling wretchedness. Thinking wretchedness. wretchedness. Every, they will be so wretched that not even have water to beat. They are all in the village. And then you look at some people, they are living well. I pray for you and your entire family. As much as you go with God, there will be no one called poor again. Amen. Jesus' precious name. Amen. Of course, you know what God said to oh, uh, Abraham. Get out of your brother and I will bless thee. But oh, immediately Abraham went out. The Bible says he became rich. In silver and gold. Okay, that was small. Now Isaac in Genesis 26 from verses 1 to 3. The Bible said, don't go like your father had gone. He said, stay in this land and I will bless you and make thee great. It was a time of famine. The Bible said from verse 12, as Isaac began to plant in that year, in that land, that year, things began to turn around for him. In verse 13, the Bible said, it became so great. He said, and the man was great and went forth and grew and became very great. Verse 14. For he had possession of flock and possession of earth and grace to servant. And the Philistines envied him. He became a, just by instruction. By what? Instruction. 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 See, I have disobeyed the instruction before. I know the pain in it. It may not come immediately. Anytime I remember that instruction, ah, I say, Lord, show mercy. If the instruction says now, close your Bible and leave this place, you will continue the preaching by yourself. Praise the Lord. That is how I become very disciplined about divine instruction. May God strengthen every one of us. Give us the hearing here and the understanding heart. In Jesus' precious name. Peter had frost, was frustrated. Jesus got to him. He said, oh, launch to the deep. And then he carried his net and threw to where he was frustrated. And the Bible said, he caught many fishes. He said, Peter. And this, he couldn't be a it alone. He had to beckon on people to help him. That's breakthrough. So, and as he kept obeying that instruction, he kept on having the breakthrough. Number three, I think I should stop here. We'll continue in the second slide. Excessive drive for pleasure. Pleasure is an arrow of poverty. When you are not careful, if it catches you when you don't have abundance, it ties you down in poverty. Don't be given to pleasure. Don't be given to pleasure. Don't be given to pleasure. What do you eat? How much is your income? How much do you use in cooking soup? He said, no, no, I can't do without having this kind of soup. Do you have the money? You can't do without what you don't have the money for. Man, you have collected ugu Okoroko, Pepe, on credit everywhere, you have to be able to buy past backyard. Just for to fill your stomach, you are living above your means. It is a killing ple pleasure. It is a killing pleasure. It is a killing pleasure. When I had no income to take care of my family, in the way I, can, I, I wish I could. Even though the church had money and the accountant were very close to me, we were only eating spaghetti. That was why I know spaghetti. People know me for what I eat. You see, when we began to cook soup, 
every Sunday. We grew also like that. Once we finish having like this, you know, there's somebody that used to give me 1,000 that time, and there's some people who will dash me. So I, my wife will cook soup. Nobody can know. I will still preach. I don't preach again now. Do I still preach like that? In those days when I'm preaching, eh? hey, I'm a big man now. <laughs> I want you to laugh small. Amen. We buy spaghetti, buy all those things, 100 naira. We're looking good. Our name is intact. Is somebody here? I have so many things I, I love to have today. Even though I could dare them. But because my level hasn't reached there, it won't come to my dream until I get there. Until when I do it, it doesn't affect all my normal life expenses. Then I won't dare it. Because life is not built on pleasure. Life is not built on pleasure. Life is not built on pleasure. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly say this. I start to be corrected. If you are born in Lagos and raised in Lagos, be careful. Pleasure, wasteful life is what kills Lagosians. If you are from Delta, be careful. They don't have respect for money. If you are from Aquaibo, be careful. If you are from the North, be careful. Are you hearing me now? You see, these are things that they just train you with it, but they don't answer to life. So you retrain yourself. You are from the north. Why do we have all our money wasted in Nigeria? Every time they get into the government, no matter what we have saved, within three months, is their lifestyle. Is their what? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. They just carry. Why are you keeping it? Prophet Muhammad said we should eat everything. So they pack everything. Boom. Finish everything. Life is not like that. Life is not like that. My Aqua Ibome people, their food is expensive. One day, one of my dickens told me, he said, he wanted to do one soup for me. I said, it's okay. He said, but I have not got the money. I said, how much? He said the leave alone was 900 naira. It was more, that's a, that should be around. Me. My coat just caught me. I said, How can you buy only leave 900? That time, oh. I said, Don't cook the soup because I won't be able to eat it again. I, I said, you, Yes, it's good. Honestly, today I can say they should do it for me if I want to eat because I can do it now. But you, if they build you up from that, if you don't get to that level, you put your head there. You use all your money to eat. Delta, Fagi too much. Fagi too much. I have several family friends in Delta. When we go there, ah, they will be begging me, Master, enjoy yourself. I said, Sir, Chairman, how much is your salary? He said, Forget that one. A bus is passing on the street. They carry all those uh, community bus that carry people. They put speaker on the on top. You think they are doing that, but no, they are doing somebody is just driving his commercial vehicle. They will carry people. They will put speaker, they will be singing. You know all those uh, songs. Ah! I said, what happened? He said, no, he's just doing his own. <laughs> you are doing party while you are doing work. Praise the Lord. Not. Don't die it. Don't die it. Re retrain yourself. Rebuild yourself. Because in the path of financial stability, you have to Kill pleasure first. Kill it what? First. Kill it what? First. When God begins to put the resources in you, yes, it's good. You now have the capacity. You can dive into it once in a while and then because you have the money. It's not that after you have finished eating the food, somebody is now knocking at your door, you are hiding under the bed. Am I talking to my people? Only this man does not behave like a dead man. I'm still doubting where you come from because your village is there. I say, where is the boundary? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs 21, 
verse 17 and 20. Proverbs 21, verse 17 and 20. That's why, you see, when you go to Lagos Island, the money these people have seen in their life by all kind of trade they do, you'll be asking, where is the money? Where is the money? The evil man who has come to take over that place from them, buy the house, bought the land, did everything, didn't see half of it. Didn't see half of it. But they will see and, and sit down and finish. They, they'll be competing with uh, what they call this uh, drink, whether champagne, all those expensive, they'll be competing. In, 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 in Lagos Island, you see people, you see someone like this, who do you, he has, he has finished within three weeks, he has finished over 300 million. Pleasure. They don't care. They don't plan about tomorrow. They just do what? What they do? Do like this. And you know money, they fly. Just put hand in it like this. You don't they go. You don't they go. If you will you, be looking for something to stop it again. <laughs> it's already going. It's already going. When you reduce pleasure, you reduce it. And then you begin to do the little you can do at a time. And then when God has placed you in that realm. Uh -huh. <laughs> One of my friends, we got to Abuja sometimes ago. And then after preaching, we were to go and eat. He said, ah, we have worked. Let's go and eat. So we got to the, <laughs> the restaurant. And then Immediately we got to the restaurant. He looked at the menu like this. He changed his mind. He just, I, that, see, I've learned to. He just changed his mind. He's, he said, We have worked. Ah, Reverend, we have worked. Let's go and look for something. He said, If we can see KFC or whatever. We didn't see KFC. We saw whether Tantalizer, Shipper. And then we got there. He looked at the menu. When he looked at the menu, he bent his leg and said, as he was withdrawing, me also, I began to withdraw. <laughs> he called the security, said, where do they sell food outside? He said, not this kind, but so that one, I said, pass the road by the side of the, he said, we now went somewhere. We had 400 naira. When he was complaining, I just took bike, I went to the hotel. I was very angry. Praise the Lord. There is no amount of money you call for me for cooking that I will not shout. Eh? It's a lifestyle. You must shout first. If not, women will increase it. Shout! What? Tomorrow they will see increasing. Women, they are, they are, they are what, allergic. They, they don't, no matter if, if they don't develop muscle. You say, it, you say eh? once you finish shouting, cut the money. <laughs> if you don't shout at all, look up. You are talking about inflation, uh, landlord increasing, uh, people are uh, tasked. Women also are increasing their own. <laughs> Amen. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Now listen, he didn't say you don't have, you don't do pleasure. He said you love it. Whatsoever you love has power over you. It controls you. Is somebody hearing me now? You are giving to whatever you love. You are giving to whatever you love. So 10 million in those days, you know, if I have 100,000, my body will be shaking. My body will be shaking. I now realize, why is it? I will be looking for, I will call my friend. Hey, where are you there? Come, come, come. I won't tell them. We won't, I, I, and I'll pray to God, Lord, whatever is behaving like this in my body, anytime money comes, uproot it. There's no amount of money that you can't even hear. Amen. You can't hear now. Why do you want to hear? You don't get your own account. <laughs> I mean that both of us, they receive a lot. Amen. Somebody received uh, 10 million naira. He now begin to sleep in hotel. What we hand it? Poverty. And then he, he, his phone was no longer working well.
said, no, no, this phone, it has the back. I don't like the back. The, it now, the, this, I don't want the one that has this uh, kind of charging port. The, the, uh, uh, it now went and buy uh, one million naira worth of phone. He now buy one million. He's now doing big girl or big boy. No. And that's why Nigeria is, is, is the market's ground for any product, no matter how expensive. Go to all the all the special specialized vehicles, all those uh, customized vehicles that they build for individual. No nation, not even America, has the number of people that have gone there to build for them like Nigeria. That's why the whole world will not allow war to happen in Nigeria again. Because it will affect the whole market in the world. If war happens, <laughs> it will affect the whole world market. Where do you see they change dollars like Nigeria? Nowhere in the world. Where they change their currency to dollar. Nowhere in the world like Nigeria. Nowhere. Is somebody hearing me now? Nowhere. So they, they can't allow Nigeria. That's why you see every eye is on Nigeria every time. If one gun jump, bam! Everybody say, hey, arrest the gun, arrest the gun and the gunner. Let there be peace there so that we can have our money. <laughs> Amen. Pleasure is a killer. Don't be given to it. Once in a while, withdraw yourself. Enjoy yourself. Sleep well. Eat well. Don't follow doctors. Say, eat well every day. Where will you go? Can you afford eating well every day? Eat well, maybe two times a week. Drink and read it all day. It's not a cause. You are walk, you are in a journey. You will get there one day where you the, the people that will be cooking for you will be up to four or five. We up to four or five, but you have to get there. Am I talking? Huh? At my level now, and I say I can eat anything I like. Uh, <laughs> I can't eat anything I like. I can't eat it. It's what God provides for me. I'm coming up. The time is going to come that my wife won't be going to kitchen anymore. I didn't marry a woman so that I can cook. It's a poor man mentality. Said, if you don't cook, I don't go eat. <laughs> because you are still poor. You will get to a level that the people that will be cooking for you, they will be up to three, four. You now want uh, your, uh, your wife's hand to be smelly of uh, onion and uh, pepper. You are still living in the village. <laughs> Amen. Come up, come up, come up. Say to somebody, come up. Come up, come up, come up. Amen. I like these guys because you don't have money to buy another one. There are cars revolving every day. You know? Evolving out of uh, nowhere. You all see this? Eh? Where is this one from? It's a, it's a new car. So get to that level. Walk your way there. Don't be given to pleasure. At the time, you have not been financially strong. In verse 20, verse 20, the level wine and oil shall not be rich. Verse 20, there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Foolish man gets this and spend. Remember, there is a difference between spending and sowing. Investing is different. We are spiritual investment. We are, we are physical investment. When you invest, you have not spent. Is somebody hearing me now? But there are spending, spending. You spend it, it goes. It doesn't come back again. He said, that's why, even if you know that this money is not enough for you, divide that money well. Let part of it go to where it will come back again. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but only a foolish when you meet the wise, you meet something. When you meet the wise, you will meet something. No matter how small, you will meet something. But when you meet a fool, you meet him empty. Pleasure. Pleasure. It kills. It kills. There are 
some American, you know, actors and uh, singers and so many of them who are very rich celebrities in those days, they began to buy mansion. There's a particular mansion, I can't remember who sold it to Tyson. Tyson sold it to 50 Cent. Everybody began, that is a mansion was making everybody bankrupt. If you see the mansion, whether seven acres or 17 acres, I can't remember, it's a long time I read it. The place, somebody sold it, one of the celebrities in America, after he has spent all the money, to renovate it alone. Every year you want to paint it and clean the whole, what they call it, mansion. You spend a fortune. So when money was no longer coming like that again, and the thing was eating, he sold it away. To 50 cent, uh, to uh, Tyson. Tyson, you know, boxing, 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 money was coming. After a while, you know, get sent to box, they box him out. Money was not coming in that world manner. You don't know what it means to have a belt. The money will be coming. So no matter what he has invested, he can't be like winning a belt. When he lost it, he look at it. This mansion became bankrupt. And then he sold it to 50 cents. When I read it, 50 cents was already looking for who to send it to. Amen. Whatever you are doing, think about tomorrow. It's very important. Hallelujah. Now as we close in that part, the only thing that can help you in maintaining or reducing your pleasure is to be financially accountable. You must be able to account to every income you have and that has gone out of you. Don't say it has gone. Write it down. How did this 1,000 went? How did it go? How did this one 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 go? And then you'll be able to look at it. And, hey, if you don't, if you cannot be accountable, God can't trust you. Praise the Lord. God can't trust you. And that's why the Bible says in Luke 16, verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least, God gives you 10,000, you realize you are able to use the 10,000 judiciously, it's going to give you a bigger one. It's going to give you a bigger one. It's just time. Because wealth and riches is entrusted into our hand by God. So today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you won't walk in the path of poverty again. How many of us have learned? Rise on your feet, somebody. Say, Father! Everything that is making me to walk in the path of poverty. Destroy it, destroy it, destroy it. Every lifestyle, everything. Whatsoever is making me to walk in the path of poverty. Destroy it right now. Destroy it right now. Da, 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 da. Somebody's talking. Meko pashe talabo. Rege, dege, 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 dege. Rege, dege, 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 dege. In Jesus' name we pray. There are many people, whether your family, among your friends, or wherever they can be, that you think they already, they have already made it. No. They are just shining at the moment. They are, not, they are not stars of all time. It takes the principle of God to make you stars of all time. There are people who had it last year who have become bankrupt now. It's not what you have in the hand. It's the principle by which your life is run. That's what I'm talking about. You may have so much money in your account now and say, ah, thank God me have overcome this. No, it is your principle that determines whether you have overcome it or not. Is somebody here with me? Even if you don't have anything now, if this principle is your principle, you are going to get there. You will get there. One day you will get there. I want you to raise up your right hand and say, Father. Say, Father. By the power in the name of Jesus. 
What will put upon Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? That made them to stand out in your principles on earth. And what will put on the apostles? Put on my life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray right now. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Stretch out your hand. I want to bless you. In the name above all names. May whatever is taking money out of your life. Unreasonably. Unnecessarily. In the name of Jesus. Let that thing be stopped now. Every form of satanic arrangement and traps that is sucking your financial glory, that is withdrawing your financial blessings from you, today, in the name of Jesus, let it be destroyed right now. Let it be destroyed now. I bless you today that the impartation to take this anointing and go walk with them. That by this time next year, when we have a time to talk, you'll be saying, that principle changed my life. In the name of Jesus, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I remember sometimes ago, I taught some people in our academy about management. Management skills. And then I told them what you can buy with your money and what you must not buy with your money. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today do I decree whatever you have learned from this world that will not make you to stand out in financial you know, life. Today, in the name of Jesus, let it be unlearned from you. Whatever the devil has successfully planted in and around your life to ensure that you remain poor. Today, whatever the thing is, I approve them, whether human being or spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That challenge is that is constantly taking money away from you. Today is ended. Amen. By the anointing of God upon my life, it's ended. Amen. By the glory of God upon this commission, it's ended. Amen. Nobody looks at you and calls you poor anymore. Amen. Nobody sees you on the street and calls you poor anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our mommy was saying sometimes ago, he said, in, some people came to her and said, That your church is a big man church. It's a big man church. Is it not a big man church? It's a big man church. It's a big man church. Some churches are even bigger than this on the street. They will write envelope and say, give it to 50 people. They should come, they should donate. Donate, come. Donate me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some will even preach whether it's church that send them. They go to filling station. I begin to beg people they don't know. I say, what are you building inside the kingdom? I say, not the kingdom of the God I know. I pray for you today. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. One word to count it all. You will never remain in this financial state again by this time next month. Amen. Anyhow God wants to do it. To the glory of his name and to the blessing of his life. Whoever needs to rem remember you. That door that God needs to open. That favor that needs to be imparted on you. That business that needs to prosper. By this time next month. Your financial status is raised. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 